Right. Hey, folks. This is part two in the Fastest Fat Loss series. Um, today, I'm going to give you a midweek update on how my first week's going. So the first episode, if you didn't catch it, detailed what I'm going to do. And uh, gave you guys an insight into the type of dieting that I like to do. And um, kind of set the scene for the next 12 weeks. Now, I had intended to do an update every week. However, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm home alone. Uh, I'm quite bored. So I'm going to grace you with a midweek update. And I might tag this on with the next update and call that a part two mega part for, um, for the end of week one. So you might get a double by, uh, by the first weekend. But anyway, uh, before I go into that, um, it does help me a lot uh, if you enjoy my work to give it a share. I know people get really shy about doing that, like sharing work, like um, because it's quite a it's quite a strong uh, endorsement, you know, for somebody, isn't it? And so hey, this is this is this is Faz, and I, I'm endorsing his work. But I do really appreciate that. The sharing helps. What also helps, sharing is good because it help, It gets the word out on your platform of choice. So whether you're sharing on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Um, what also helps is five-star review on iTunes because that endorses it and helps other people see it on a larger platform. And I'm also going to put this up on YouTube. So a like and subscribe and comment on YouTube is good. It all helps the algorithm of getting this to more people. So if you do enjoy this, then yeah, by all means, show me some support. Anyway, anyway, I'm just mentioning that just to try and build up the profile of this podcast so um, that other people can see it and hear it. All right. So in terms of how this week's gone, so I thought it would be nice to chronicle what's been going on this week. And in doing so, talk about the concept and the difficulties of hunger. Now, I mentioned in the first podcast that hunger is something that I would be dealing with going into this cut. And typically, hunger tends to subside once you're in the flow of things. But... I wasn't sure what the initial wave of hunger was going to be like. If you remember that conversation, great. If you don't, feel free to go back and watch the first one. But anyway, the idea is this in brief. It's that once you've been dropping your calories really low, your appetite tends to go down. There's a certain break point. Certainly for me, once I hit about 1,000 to 1,200 calories, my appetite just goes through the floor and hunger control becomes really easy. And that happens to be the case for most people I work with. Nine out of 10 people I work with, that tends to be the case. Now, however, I did speculate that I would probably get an initial pang of hunger as my body was adapting, going from quite high calories to then quite low calories. And that was true. So Monday, I was moderately hungry because Monday I was coming from a weekend of fairly free eating. And I actually did a fast on Monday. So I start, I kicked this whole thing off with a fast. So I fasted from Sunday night or Sunday afternoon at about four or five to Monday afternoon at about four or five. So that's a 24 hour fast, you know, sounds pretty good, isn't it? I mean, you, you sleep through eight to nine hours of it. Um, you know, you, you're busy on a Monday. Mondays are typically quite busy days for me. Um, I went to the gym as well for the first time. Gyms are open in the UK. Woohoo. Um, my freedoms. And so I did that and then I came back and that's when I ate. And so I had done a 24 hour fast, which was great. It was a good way to kickstart things. So I ate a bit of food on Monday, had a couple of meals. And then Tuesday, I was really hungry. I woke up hungry and I was hungry throughout most of the day. Now in the past, that might have worried me, but now I've been doing this type of diet for a long time. I can sort of rationalize it. And that's really the message and the, the learning point for today. Hunger is not this constant 
Like, okay, I'm eating this amount of calories. I'm going to be this hungry. That is not generally how it works. Hunger comes in ebbs and flows. It ups and downs. And it's, in my experience, it's fairly uncorrelated to your actual food intake. Um, like I can have a low food intake and my appetite can be dead. I can have a high food intake and my appetite can be high. You see, you'll see this for yourself. Um, if you ever finish a diet and then go back to eating more food, you'll notice your appetite will kick in after a while. The more you eat, the more you'll want to eat. It's a really weird phenomenon. And it doesn't, it, it can be used to your advantage if you understand it. If you don't understand it, it can really throw you off. So I enter Tuesday really hungry. I woke up, I go, oh, crack, I am hungry. And, um, and throughout the day, really hungry. I trained uh, legs on Tuesday. So that added to the hunger because I was training the quads, um, decent amount of volume on there. So that saps your energy. It makes you more hungry as well. And so all through Tuesday, I was a lot more hungry. Now, there was two, two things with that. One, I didn't freak out because I realized, well, not I realized, I know that hunger is fairly uncorrelated to your intake and hunger ebbs and flows. So just because it's high on one day, it doesn't mean that's it. The rest of the diet, it's just going to be high and life is going to be unsustainable. The diet's going to be unsustainable. Because I think that's where a lot of people screw themselves over. They'll start a diet. They'll have one bad day. Like, like for me, this was the second day, or second two days in, and hunger was high. And that's it. They'll freak out. They go, well, this is it. This is too much. I can't do this. I'm tapping out. And that's it. They'll just give up. Uh, and in their minds, it's rationalized because it's like, okay, I've, um, there you go. You know, I've, uh, I tried it. Hunger was too much. I can't cope with it. And um, they'll give up. But little do they know that actually it might just have been the random occurrence on that day. You may just have woke up hungry for whatever reason. Um, which brings me to my second point of today and related to hunger. A lot of it comes down to perception. If you think you're um, deprived and if you're constantly thinking about being deprived, I guarantee you, you'll be hungrier. If you can put that out of your mind, put it out of the mind that you're deprived, put it out of the mind that you're, you're really low on calories or whatever, um, just put it out of your mind. You know, Understand that it's something you're putting yourself through and you want to do this because you want the result. All of a sudden, it becomes a lot easier. Perception is huge. There was a study that I saw on this actually where there were... Um, very, I can't remember the exact details, but essentially various groups of people were given um, various amounts of calories disguised in a sort of a fluid type of thing. And um, the ones who um, basically they didn't, the ones who thought they were eating a lot more were more satiated, even though they actually weren't eating much more. So perception is huge. And conversely, of course, the ones who thought they were eating very little but actually we're eating a lot more calories, ended up being very, very hungry. So perception is huge. So if you go into the diet thinking, you know what, this is gonna suck, then that will no doubt come true. I mentioned in, my, in the first podcast, I had a client attempt to fast once um, a few years ago and um, four hours into it, he just freaked out <laughs> and that was it, you know, he was done. Uh, and he's gone four hours without food before, but just the th just in his head, he had just, talked himself out of it. He's like, that's it. I'm done. Um, so anyway, Wednesday morning, which is today. So today is Wednesday at about eight in the evening. So Wednesday morning, today morning, I woke up not very hungry at all. And all throughout the day, I've not been very hungry. In fact, I've only just had my first meal. Uh, well, no, not only just about four o'clock, I had my first meal. Um, and now I'm about to have another one at about eight and that's probably it for the day. So hunger has been greatly reduced today. So if I had listened to myself yesterday and just decided, all right, this is too much, I wouldn't have enjoyed such a good productive day today because I actually went to the gym again, had a great training session, 
haven't felt hungry all day, felt really energized, felt great, felt lighter on my feet, looked good. Um, got the dryness going on in the face and everything. So yeah, you know, appetite is a funny one. It's in my experience, it's highly uncorrelated to your food intake. And, um, many, many times I've reversed out of a diet and actually been more hungry. And then I've gone into a diet and my appetite has died. And if you are experienced, you can use this phenomenon to your advantage by like what I'm doing is cutting with very low calories. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's useful. It's useful to know. But that's the big sort of lesson, the midweek lesson is talking about appetite. Now, the other thing I should say is I, on Monday, because of the fast, I decided to use some caffeine. So I have these 200 milligram caffeine tablets. And I'm not normally a massive caffeine drinker. I normally drink decaf. Yeah, I know. Terrible, isn't it? But uh, how unmanly is that? But uh, um, yeah, so I normally drink um, decaf. So when I have a bit of caffeine in a, in a capsule, it, it normally is quite strong. So I did take some Monday because I wanted to preempt the fast. I also took some Tuesday morning, again, just one 200 milligram tablet. Although Monday it helped, Tuesday it didn't. So again, appetite variable. The biggest variable with appetite really comes down to perception, calories, and sometimes it just comes down to chance. So it's staying in control and understanding that, okay, I've got a plan. You know, I'm not going to starve. I'm not going to die. <laughs> Nothing bad's going to happen. Uh, and, you know, just steady the ship and see yourself through. Um, yeah, don't trust appetite necessarily. Um, right, I'm going to call it there. I will probably add this on to the weekend chat. How long is this? I don't know. I can't tell from here. So I'll either add it on or I'll release it on its own. I guess we shall wait and see. <laughs> All right. Right. Hello, everyone. Um, this is part 2B of the Fastest Fat Loss podcast, where I chronicle my 12-week journey to leanness uh, for my 40th. And my aim is, with every episode, to give you an update, but also to give you an insight. So... We're not going to be covering a lot of the X's and O's here because we all know like it's about a calorie deficit. It's about making good food choices. I'm probably not even going to go into food rules and the actual mechanisms of how to construct a diet in this one either. This is designed to be a little bit more high level than that. So if that's, it's designed to be more about the nitty gritty of diet. What is the, what are the psychological uh, processes that go on um, during the course of a diet. What are dealing with some of those internal struggles, the battles that you have in your mind, the rationalizations and all that kind of stuff when you're dieting. Dealing with that, that's kind of what I really want to speak about during the course of this 12-week podcast. So um, just to kind of summarize the first part of the second podcast, so you guys have just listened to that. It's quite odd, isn't it, for me? Because I recorded that three days ago and I'm adding this on. That's the plan anyway. So anyway, just to summarize that, um, we I started talking about appetite. And I want to carry on the discussion of appetite today um, or now for you guys listening at home. Um, so I want to carry on the discussion of appetite by talking you through how the last few days have gone. So I recorded, I left you guys on Wednesday morning. Wednesday and Thursday were quite high appetite days. So for, for whatever reason, appetite was raging on Wednesday and Thursday. Friday, and I trained Wednesday and Thursday. Friday, I didn't train and I was relatively busy and Friday was far easier. So that was nice. Um, but I wanted to point that out because during the course of this initial week, I've had, I think, four days where appetite's been high, two days where appetite's been low. And I suspected as much when I talked about this last week in the first podcast, I suspected that 
I wasn't sure whether my appetite would be really strong the first week or really dull, simply because I was coming from a period of eating quite a lot. So the adjustment to the diet may well have been difficult. Um, so I kind of speculated that it may have been tougher because I was just coming from a place where I'd been eating a lot. I specifically remember Monday was quite easy, which I imagine was partly because I was busy, but also partly because the diet hadn't really hit me yet. So by the time Tuesday rolled around, my body thought, okay, he's in a deficit. I know what he's doing. We've been here before. Let's make him hungry. So Tuesday and um, Tuesday was a day of, of quite high hunger. Now, Wednesday and Thursday <clears throat> ended up to be fairly hungry days as well. Um, Friday wasn't. So yesterday was quite an easy day. Um, now, all I did during the course of Wednesday and Thursday was to eat a little bit more. And that was fine. And I've kind of talked about this bit of more in the appetite episode. Well, that you've just listened to. It's quite confusing. Um, the appetite episode, the first half of this episode, I talked about appetite in the sense that your appetite will vary and it's okay to vary your deficit relative to your appetite. Like just because you're hungry on one day, doesn't mean you have to stick to the same amount of food on that day as well. You can allow yourself to eat a little bit more perhaps stay in a deficit, perhaps be out of your deficit, but eat a little bit more, that's a-okay. As long as you still have the broad mindset of sticking to the diet. And I think that's a lot of what people refer to as like flexible dieting. Flexible dieting is quite a confused concept. It's, um, it's not the ability to eat whatever you like. It's the ability to go off plan um, fundamentally. So in this case, it's, it's my ability or the skill to be able to go off plan and then come right back on plan if I want to. And just, yeah, be very, very flexible in that regard. So yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, I ate a little bit more simply because I was hungry, but I imagine I was probably still in a deficit. Yesterday, I went for eating very little and that worked out lovely. That was great. It was, uh, and I feel like there are some factors surrounding that, like training intensity. And I have some thoughts on what to do with training which I'll cover in a different episode. But today, the big focus is going to be on a perception of diet. Now, this was sparked on by a conversation with a friend and client of mine, Jason. And uh, we both diet very similar and we have done for years. So we diet uh, hard and fast. And like a lot of the things that we're discussing in this podcast, we um, vary our deficit depending on what we need to do depending on our deadlines, depending on our ability to get the job done. And we have certain portions of the week where we're a bit more free and easy. Now, why I think this works for both of us and why it might not work for a lot of people is if you think about your diet as something which you're in control of and it has some kind of system, I think that lends itself to greater feelings of control and greater feelings of self-efficacy. Like you believe in your competence, you believe you're confident in your abilities to do this. I, th I really think one of the reasons that people fail any diets, not just sort of high, high deficit diets, is they don't really understand what they're doing. So they'll start off on a diet or they'll do something ridiculous like a juice fast cleanse or something insane like that, like here drink this orange juice every day for a month and you'll lose your belly. Just, just something, just some non or lemon juice, whatever it is, some non or alkaline water. I don't know, just stuff like that. They they'll do it because some celebrity or some local trainer, some airhead meathead has persuaded them that that's the way to go. So they'll do something nonsense like that. They don't really, they trust the results. They trust the person. Perhaps that person is an authority figure. Perhaps that person, is 18 years old with abs or early 20s with abs. Great, let's trust them because obviously that means they're qualified. No, it doesn't. That's a, a lot of sarcasm there, in case you're wondering. Um, so yeah, I think there's that. People then don't have confidence really in what they're doing. They know deep down that, yeah, okay, this guy's, he looks good, but what he's selling me is probably a dream. So they'll buy the juice cleanse, they'll buy the diet pills, they'll buy into the really crappy way of dieting. 
or let's say they don't do that. Let's say they just decide they're going to do it themselves and they, they crash diet. And they crash diet without any real attention to managing the crash diet, like going back to maintenance every once in a while, all that kind of stuff. And so eventually when things get hard, willpower runs out and they blow the diet all because they were never really in control. They were just hanging on for dear life. They didn't know all about this kind of stuff that we're talking about here. They didn't know that appetite can be variable because it's quite scary when you're setting off on a diet and for let's say the first three out of four days, you're insanely hungry. Like that's a weird feeling. And you think to yourself, can I really do 12 weeks of this? You don't realize that appetite is actually very pulsatile. It goes up and down. And then you don't also, if you don't have somebody like a coach to bounce your feelings off of or to reassure you that it's normal and it's okay, that often that's all it takes is just to tell you that, look, actually what you're feeling right now, this hunger or you're feeling a little bit crazy or you're dreaming about, you know, chocolate, rice, krispies, that's quite normal. Um, it Oftentimes it just takes that psychological pressure off if someone tells you, you know what, this is actually fine. A great example of that is I was um, dieting for my contest about three years ago and about six weeks out, I was feeling awful. About six to four weeks out, I was feeling terrible. And I remember saying to the gym owner, who's an experienced bodybuilder and he's been around the scene for a while, I said, Mick, I feel you know, I feel like this. I didn't really know what to do with myself because I thought, I was thinking, is this normal? Is this going to be like this next for the next four to six weeks? And um, he told me that actually it's very normal. And if you were feeling better at this stage, then odds are you're probably not going to be ready for this, for the show, which I thought made a lot of sense. And he gave me the example of another guy who was competing round about when I was, who came in just bouncing around and really happy with everything. Um, and it turned out in the end, that guy didn't actually get in particularly great shape because he was behind. So yeah, you need to be able to manage your emotions. And sometimes all it can take is either for somebody external, if you're inexperienced to tell you, you know, this is all right, because that sort of puts your mind at ease. Or if you're experienced, just to rationalize it for yourself. So the first point that I want to talk about here that I want to underline is perception of your struggle very much dictates how you how you react to the diet. So if you perceive yourself as struggling and out of control, the diet will seem impossible. And I think that's really important to remember. As much as you can, and this is where experience comes into play. And if you're doing this and you're relatively inexperienced, or let's say you're experienced, but you failed diets before, this is when it's useful to have somebody on your side, an experienced eye, who can write an experienced eye, not only experienced, but somebody who's been there, somebody who's been fat and is now lean. Um, yeah, a, a, a 25 year old PT who's always been lean is probably not the best person to guide you through your fat loss journey because they can't really understand this. They can somewhat sympathize but to really understand, you've got to have been there and to rationalize and say, hey, you know what, this is okay. When you're feeling like absolute crap, when you're feeling like you're walking through quicksand every step of the day, when you feel like you have to eat, like your life depends on it, you know what, it's actually all right. I've been there and it's fine because I've been there and I know. So first off, the first point underlined is, just underline that again, um, perception, makes a big difference. Just have a sip of tea. So perception makes a huge difference to how in control you feel and ultimately how well your diet does. All right. So um, I guess the other topic I wanted to talk about, which I will talk about now. No, I won't talk about now. I wanted to talk about training in the gym and how that can change when you're doing this type of diet. So I will talk about that in the next one. I'll keep this short and snappy. And I'll just say, if you like my work, if you appreciate hearing the ramblings of a dieter and you appreciate this sort of high level content, um, I have a lot of practical guides in my other podcast and in my Instagram. 
um, then feel free to look at those. But this is, if you appreciate this as a high level guide to emotions and psychology as a journey of somebody on a fat loss phase, then um, great. Um, show me your support by uh, liking, um, subscribing wherever you are. Um, and a five star review on iTunes would be awesome. That helps me to get my message out there. Uh, yeah, support, uh, support my work. Right, folks, I'm going to call it there. I will more than likely be back next week where I may or may not have another two-parter. All right.